first thing I want to ask you is, what are some of your earliest memories? Well, what I was telling you a while ago about seeing my grandmother, the only time I remembered her when I was three years old. She was sitting in front of the kitchen sink there in Uncle Herbert's house in the northwest part of Dunkirk eating a piece of watermelon. And that's what I remember about my grandmother Wagner. Her name was Mary Jane Wagner. And she was a Leonard. She was one of the Leonard family. She was the oldest. And Aunt Sally was next, and she married a, a lamb, and their family wound up living in Portland. There used to be a girl over there, Emma Cooper, one of, the, one of her daughters. And then there was Uncle John, and he married Aunt Harriet. I don't recall her maiden name, but they lived in Rawl for years, and they made the they adopted a girl, or took her for raise, to raise, I think, I don't believe they adopted her. And they, uh, uh, her name was Hazel. She married Chet Bolley, and they lived south of Rawl for several years. Then they, they must have had five or six children. And the last account I had of them, they lived on the jog, between here and Muncie, west of Scheidler. And if you want to tell me, if you want me to tell you something funny, I can. <laughs> Nobody will ever, in that family, ever hear about it anyway. One time, they had a cook stove in this house, and it had a oven door that let down. And they had an old house cat. The old cat would jump up in the oven and lay there and sleep. So one day she fired up the stove and slammed the oven door shut, and the old cat was in the oven. So she baked the cat. <laughs> so one of the boys, I think, still is in Scheidler, as far as I know. They're pretty decent people, but their mother was something else. <laughs> okay, what are, where, are, where are some different places you've lived throughout your life? Well, I lived, I was born and raised three miles southwest of Hartford City on what is called the Atkinson Pike now, and I lived there for 69 years. Before I moved to town. So I've lived here, it'll be 18 years, 12th day of October. Describe the homes you've had and which was your favorite? Well, where I was born and raised, I suppose. <laughs> it was a, a frame house. My grandmother, Lucas, had drawn the plans, and then she didn't live to see it built, because she was, uh, let's see, I think she must have been about 18 when she was married. My grandfather Lucas was 44, and I used to have a letter that she had written him during the Civil War, and she was so afraid that he'd have to go to the war, and she, she wrote him a letter, and she called Abraham Lincoln that old tyrant <laughs> because she figured he's the one that caused the war. But Grandpa didn't have to go to the war because he had a crooked trigger finger. <laughs> they said that's what kept him out of the war. <laughs> so uh, her, Grandma Lucas's maiden name was, well, her name is Elizabeth Emig. E-M-I-G, and they were from German heritage, both of them. Did, well, that's okay. 
Did, did you and your family go on family trips? And if so, where did you go? And which trip or which place to go was your favorite? Well, back in them days, we didn't go very far away. That was back in the horse and buggy days. But one time, the farthest that we went, my father's sister, Aunt Ada, or Ada, A-D-A, she married Harry Vandiver, and he was kind of a roving nature. He was never satisfied to stay very long in one place. They used to live west of Hartford about three miles on a little farm. So he sold that out, and they went down by Greensburg, Indiana. They bought uh, 60 or 80 acres there. So while Grandpa Lucas still lived, my father and mother, this before I was born, my father and mother took Grandpa Lucas. They could get on a train here in Hartford and ride down to whatever station they got off down there. And then they had to hire a cab to take him out to Aunt Adie's house. And they got in there after night and it had rained a lot and they, they hired this horse-drawn carriage from the livery stable to take them out there. So it was up and down hill out there, maybe four or five miles out of town. And they, my mother and grandpa was sitting in the back seat and my mother had to hold her feet up when I went down in the hollow because the water was over the road and to get to keep her feet from getting wet. So they got in there after night and you know, went, settled in, went to bed. The next morning, my father got up and, <clears throat> and went to the barn with Harry to do the chores. And it was so steep between the house and the barn that you had to hold a wire to get up and down the hill. So when my <laughs> father got back to the house, <laughs> he got around to my mother. He said, let's go home. <laughs> he had left <laughs> But I guess they stayed two or three days. And then, well, let's see. Where else did I go? Oh, one time, this is before I was born, but I'll tell you about it. My uh, father and mother was going to take Grandpa Lucas out to see a couple sisters. One of them lived in Nebraska and the other in Iowa. And one, I don't know which one lived which place, but my, when they got, went by train to Chicago, and while I was in the train station there, why, somebody was getting around Grandpa Lucas, and my father had to go over and, and tell him to come with him, because no telling what that guy would have done, got his money or hurt him or something. So they got out there, and as I said, I don't know which sister it was that they visited in Iowa. But my mother stayed there. She didn't go on to Nebraska to see the other one, but my father and grandfather did. So that was one of the big trips they took. And let's see, we people didn't do a lot of traveling back in them days. They pretty, stayed pretty close to home. Okay. Um, did your family have any pets? And if so, describe them. Yes. When I was little, we always had a, a collie dog, black and white, called him Old Shep. And there's a picture up there on the wall, you can take a picture of that. That's our house years ago, and Grandpa Lucas is sitting there, and Grandpa Wagner, my mother, 
and Father and Aunt Maddie are all there on the porch, and I think the old Shep's standing there, too. That's the way the house looked originally. While she's getting a picture of that house, uh, describe the first time you moved away from home. When was it, and how did you and your family deal with the experience? When I left that home? Yeah. Well, I lived there for over 69 years, <laughs> so I dealt with it very well. <laughs> it didn't excite me a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, when that house is built, you see how it is there. It had two porches on the north and a porch on the south. And the one on the south had a, you raised up a door, and then there was steps to go down in the cellar from that porch. And then there's also an entrance to the cellar from the living room, or from the dining room that went down. And the cellar was walled up, the base, the cellar walls were walled up with uh, uh, stone, limestone, and it had a dirt floor for years and years. And after I was married, my husband and I then had a cement floor put in it. But that's the way the house looked back then. It had a shingle roof on it at that time. And there was a chimney in the north end, as you can see, that was a, up through the dining room and the upstairs bedroom where Grandpa Wagner always slept when he was there. And the other chimney was on the front part, went up between the living room and the front room, which back in them days they called a parlor. And then in the, the two back rooms were built on later. And the north end was the kitchen and then there was a another summer kitchen to the south. And years later then, after I was married, why we took about five feet off of that south room in the back and made a bathroom. And then we took uh, some space off of the downstairs bedroom, which was off of the living room, and made a wardrobe in the southwest corner of the living room. And then there was also a, it had one, two, three, four, five, six, six outside doors, I believe, when that house was built. And the one uh, to the north in the living room, we, there was an offset from the main part of the living room to that door. So we made a wardrobe out of that and closed that door off. So back in them days when I built a house, <coughs> there was um, plenty of doors. So if you had a cat in the house, you said scat, you meant scat. <laughs> Yeah, that was when I was, uh, I think, four years old. And then that's my baby picture on the left hand upper part. And I think I was, I think I was nine months in that one. <coughs> and that lower picture on the lower right hand side, my father mother's picture, and that it wasn't their wedding picture, but it was taken the year they were married. And that in the middle was Ray and Larry and Jerry, and Ray had a little pup that was taken out in our front yard. And Ray must have been about eight, and Larry and Jerry between three and four. And the other picture was my husband, and he's holding Ray when he was about six months old, and that's his father in the middle, Jim Rinker, and the other one is his grandfather, Daniel Rinker. And that was when his 
grandfather, I think, was 92 years old. Describe the first job you ever had. Well, as I said, I went to Ball State, studied to be a, a primary teacher, and I taught at three schools. My first school was at Gadbury School, three miles west of Hartford on the highway, just across the road from where my husband's family lived, and I taught my husband's youngest sister and she would go home for lunch at noon to come back and so one time long and I believe it was in January of that year she brought me back a couple popcorn balls she'd made and I thanked her for them and later that afternoon, when there wasn't any other, other kids around close, she came around and she said, you know who sent you those popcorn balls? And I said, well, you did, didn't you? And she said, no, my brother Cleo did. I'd seen him out across the road with his father shucking corn, but that's all I knew about him. So it wasn't a few days end, he sent a note to school with her and asked me for a date. So we started going together in January of 1929. And my mother had always said, uh, they, they were married 28th of April, 1900. She always said, if you ever get married, get married on our wedding anniversary. So they said we started together in January of 29. So. We went together then until the next April when we were married, 28th of April, 1930. In the meantime, my parents had died in 1927. My mother had a nervous breakdown in January of 25 while I was still in high school. And she weighed as much as 196 pounds when she's in good health. And after she lost weight, she you could see then that she had a garter. And it was a toxic kind that this sent poison all over her body. And there'd been another lady here in town that had gone to Marion Hospital and had surgery and got along fine. So <clears throat> the spring of 27, when I went to the spring term at Ball State, I came home on Friday and from school, and we took my mother that same afternoon to Marion Hospital, and she was there five weeks and a day until she died. And the doctor told us afterwards that she had one chance in a thousand of getting, making us after the surgery. They almost lost her on the table when she died the next day. And then my, I didn't want to leave home. Well, my, before that though, my father then only lived five weeks after that. She died the 19th of July. 1927, and my father died the 25th of August, a week after I had my 20th birthday. So I had to have a guardian for a year. You want to know then about my teaching? First job I had? Yeah. I put a lot of stuff in that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Guess that's what you wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I first taught there at Gadbury School, like I said, and that's where I met Cleo, uh, later married. And then the next year I taught at the Pleasant Grove School, southwest of Hartford City. 
And then the next year, I taught over in Jackson Township at a school a mile north of Mill Grove called Lanning School. So that was my teaching career where I taught. And since then, I, well, then my husband, he worked in the factory, different places, and then in 19 and 51, he developed TB, and he went to the TB sanitarium they had back then up of north of Fort Wayne, and he went up there in July of 51, and he, he was negative in 30 days' time, but they kept him up there until for 16 months until the second day of November, 1952, and that was election day. So I went up there and got him. In the meantime, I was running for county recorder, and I went up there that morning and brought him back home. And in them days, we voted at the county infirmary, which is three miles southwest of where we lived. And we went down there, and everybody was surprised when he came in to vote because they didn't even know he was home yet. Hmm. And why did they keep him there for so long? Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> they did it. I don't know. I guess they wanted to be sure that you was healthy when you left, and seemingly he was. Hmm. What hobbies have you had, and what ha hobbies do you have now? I'm not much of a hobby person. <laughs> I... Your politics was almost <laughs> a hobby, wasn't it? <laughs> well, if you want to say that, I guess. Yeah, I've always been a Republican, and my father was precinct committeeman for years, and so Cleo and I, we worked in politics, too. He was precinct committeeman, and I was vice, and then since I've been in town, I, I've been vice for several years, and I always helped register people, and, and sometimes I worked at the election at the polls and where they voted, and I'd get uh, applications for people that was shut in so they could vote by absentee ballot and everything like that and I've always been a Republican and worked in Republican politics. I've been president of the Republican Women's Club and I was treasurer for it for a long time and I don't think we have a club anymore. It's kind of dwindled us out. But as I said, I've always voted Republican, and I wouldn't vote for a Democrat for president or for governor. <laughs> I have voted for a few local people in the county when I couldn't vote for the Republican. <laughs> okay. Describe some of the things you've done with your friends as you were growing up. Well, as I said, I was an only child, and we lived a half mile from either way from neighbors, so we didn't have a whole lot of association. Back there in them days of a night, and especially the summertime, farmers would visit one another. We'd go over to Bill Williams's or up north to Bill Knight's and down south to, well, Jones's wasn't there at that time. Later on they were. My sister in Alburnus, her folks live down there, I think. I forget it. It me like some 20 years they lived there on that farm next to us. So we became good neighbors, and that's how she got acquainted with my brother in law, Roger. And they were married and had one son, Dean. And Uh, 
Well, what historical events do you remember most? Well, one time, as I said, I was always a Republican. One time there was a Republican get together up at where St. Joseph County, where St. Joe College located up in uh, Rensselaer. Yeah, Rensselaer. And there was a there was going to be a get together up there, and that's when Ike had. I think I could have been president, yes. He wasn't at that time. And he was to be up there, a speaker. And so I took five other ladies and drove up there. And we parked out in the stubble field where they had a wheat field and walked up through the stubble field into this grove where the the meeting was to be and it was a nice building and so we went in there and we ate in there ate our lunch and when the table we were sitting at the waitress would come out of the kitchen and pass our table and go into another room and one of the ladies with me was Rose Mills, and she had the brass of a monkey. She <laughs> didn't say anything and had the nerve. And she would, she asked this waitress if she couldn't take that food in there to another room. Well, no way was she going to let her. So when we knew most, that's where Ike was. So Charles Halleck was one of the congressman at that time. So after we ate, we went out in the lobby and this basement floor where we were was about four feet below the ground. So Rose and one of the women had gone into the restroom and I asked, uh, the state police came through there and I asked him if he knew what room uh, or what door I could be coming out of. So he says, I'll find out. So he went out and found out, come back and told us. And so I said, Rose, get yourself out of here if you want to see Ike. So we went up and we walked along and could look down in this room where Ike was and you could see the men sitting around the table. And I said, well, there's Ike. I can see his bald head over there. So we went over then, there was a breezeway between that building and another building. So we went over there and stood by that breezeway and there were three students from St. Joseph College standing over there. One of them had a camera and right away Rose said, I'll give you a, pic a dollar if you take my picture shaking hands with Ike. I said, I'll give you another dollar if you take my picture. So. Pretty soon the door opened. Charles Halleck came first. I reached out and got his hand. I said, Hiya, Charlie. This hell is <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't know whether taking any pictures or not. So uh, I said, and, and I came and I shook hands with him and I asked about Mamie. And he said, Well, Mamie didn't come on that trip. So when they went on, a, a group of them, I, they, uh, I asked the fellow that had the camera, I said, did you get any pictures? He said, yes, I think I got some good ones. Well, right away, old excited Rose, she said, well, how are we going to get them? We're going to go home tonight. So he says, uh, well, I'll go and get a quick development and meet me back here at 4 o'clock. So we went back there, and of course, these boys were dressed in their school robes, and well, when they came back, they had on overalls. Didn't look the same, but he had the pictures. So then, looked at them, and at the time I was 
working in the record. No, I was working the welfare office then. And my director was a Republican. She knew I was going to go. We weren't supposed to take part in politics, but she was a Republican. I told her I was going. So when uh, we got the pictures, why, the one that Rose was shaking hands with Ike, you could just see my hand, but you didn't know whose hand it was. And then they had the picture of me shaking hands with So old Rose right away, she was going to have it put in the paper. And I said, well, since that only shows my hand, nobody knows whose hand it is. So it was put in the paper, that much of it was. So then that, that so then we took the pictures, and there was a tent out between where we were and where the outdoor meeting was going to be that night. So we went in there and Rose takes her picture going around and showing to everybody in this tent. And she come back and I said, Rose, you know who that woman is over there? She didn't know. And I said, well, that's Charlie Alex's wife, which didn't make any difference. But anyway, later on then, when we went out in the, where the night meeting was going to be, and it was a grassy-like field. They had chairs and seats all along. I don't have any rows of them. I mean, they could have sat seated. And so the first three rows was roped off for dignitaries. And <laughs> knowing rows, she walked up to the guy that had the rope and said, now anybody that can get their picture shaking hands with Ike ought to sit on the front row. He just raised up the rope and sat on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite an experience. <laughs> okay, what are some of your favorite foods? I like most anything. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite really would be. I, I do like uh, blackberries. My sister Malburnus, she always told me that blackberries taste like bed bug smells. I don't know how she got that in her head, but I like I like blackberry flavor because it's kind of a wild flavor. And I like any kind of berries. I like let's say there's only two things that I don't care for, and that's parsnips and asparagus. Those two things I can do without. Anything else I can eat. <laughs> okay, who have been some of your favorite musicians? Oh, I can't think. <laughs> Can't think. Can't think of their names. Well, maybe Doesn't this matter. will help. What are some of your favorite songs? Oh, I like America the Beautiful. I like uh, any patriotic song I like. It's so damn democratic. Yeah, I don't find Democrat songs in there. Yep. And I love elephants, you know. <laughs> I don't have any use for a donkey. But uh, by, my father always had a mule team. And he would, uh, the Democrats, when they were going to have a parade up around town years ago, some of them would always ask him for his mule team. And he would never let them have <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong guy, yep, yep. So one of your favorite songs could be that one elephant walk. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be. <laughs> uh, what month of the year is your favorite and why? Well, I guess I like 
March and April, like the beginning of spring, after we've had a long, hard winter. <laughs> There's an advantage of all of them, I guess, if you want to think about it. But What invention that was invented after you were born do you think has been the most useful and why? Well, electricity is one of them, I think. Because I remember when we used to have just the kerosene lamps. And before that, they had gas lights in our house. There used to be a gas well in the south east corner of our farm. So the folks burned gas, and there used to be gas piped into the fireplace in the living room. That was before my time. But that would be one of them, electricity. And of course, well, the automobile was invented before I was born, I'm sure, but it's been modernized so much since then that if I grew up in the horse and buggy days, my family never had a car. My mother was a little old-fashioned, and she didn't want a car. My father would have bought one, but we never had one while they lived. <clears throat> and if I didn't have a car, I'd be lost. <laughs> <laughs> Name someone you feel has made a significant contribution to the world. What is that contribution and why do you feel that it's significant? Well, I think the Wright brothers were some of the first to contribute to something that has grown from their invention. And then, of course, the automobile, the typewriter, and now the the computers, which I don't know a thing about and don't want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> what future events do you look forward to most and why? Well, I used to like to go to State Fair, but I haven't been there for a long time. But years ago when my parents lived, my father would go to the state fair one year, and then my mother and I would go the next. And we'd get on a streetcar here in Hartford and ride to Indianapolis and get off at the fairgrounds, which was about eight miles outside of downtown Indianapolis. And then we'd go in the afternoon, then about middle afternoon, we would ride the city car down to downtown station and then get on the car and ride back home. My father always liked bananas so well, and my mother never cared much for them. She said they always sard in her mouth, and I'm not very fond of bananas. I've been deathly sick on them three times in my life, so I don't eat bananas now. And uh, but the one time when the only time my father went to Union County and visited was when I think I must have been about 12. We'd get on a train here and right down to Connersville and then change cars and go into Liberty. And we visited with, uh, well, one time we visited with Uncle George's when they lived out on the 
row Chris farm and I know we rode out there I don't know whether somebody met us or whether we went out there uh, in a horse drawn carriage but anyway I know we had to ford the creek to get up to row Chris's farm and I remember that and then one time when I went down well, the only time my father was down there, it was on Verla, and Joe and Margaret lived south of Liberty, and we, my father found out that, that Margaret liked bananas. So she came up one year to, and spent a week at our house, when, 